Welcome back friends. Today we're going to practice our oil painting skills with this scene right here, not far from my house. Anyway, this is quick, it's easy, and even if it doesn't turn out, it's not a masterpiece, but it makes an absolute great gift, and I always emboss them with my special stamp here. I'll leave a link below where you can get the cards and where you can get the stamp. So, let's begin. So, again, I'll just show you this paint. It's uh, by Winsor Newton. It's Griffin Alkid. And the Alkid base in the oil paint makes it dry very quickly. Okay. We can kind of just begin by putting a little white on there. I'll just speed this up for you just a little bit here. This is the ultramarine blue here. We'll just throw a little blue in there. A little tiny bit of paints gray, a lizard and crimson. This is a Russian oil painter. His name is Igor Sakharov. And he uses his fingers and his hands in a lot of his paintings. I've even seen him use the side of his palm on some larger pieces. Now to just take a little bit of the lemon yellow, paints gray, which makes a green. But we're going to want to gray that down a little bit. So we'll gray it down with a little red. A little bit of uh, alizarin crimson, paints gray. Kind of makes the some darks. Put some alizarin crimson in there just to kind of liven it up a little bit. Now let's take some raw sienna. Raw sienna is kind of a transparent color. Color. <clears throat> and back to some of these greens down. Down in the lower half. So we can just kind of work some of these blend some of these edges, work them in. All these background colors just need to be nice and soft. We'll put some details in it later. Kind of work around the barn. Again, we're not making a masterpiece here. We're just practicing. Maybe good time to try new things. And <clears throat> even if it's a mistake in our eyes, people still love giving, getting these little cards. A little bit more green in the foreground, and that's a mixture of Payne's gray and lemon yellow. Take some of the beginning color off them there. When you do landscape paintings, as things come closer to us, you we get more yellow light. And as they get farther away, we lose we uh, lose that yellow light. So the more yellow just means it's closer to us. The farther away is more violet, which that's definitely not violet enough. There we go. Okay, now we'll take some of this some of the darker colors have a mixture of green in there and a, a square brush, flat brush, just to get up close to the barn there. And we'll work some of those darker shades, shadows in there a little bit later. Now let's mix up some red for the roof. Now the top of the roof, when it, the flatter the roof is, the lighter it'll be. So we'll begin by putting a light red on the very top. Just quick strokes. A little darker red. A little lighter red again for the flatter roof. And let's make a kind of a little weathered color. We'll use some Payne's Gray, Lizard Crimson, and maybe a little bit of Burnt Humber. Check to see, that's a little dark. 
Put a little raw sienna in there. And let's try a little blue. We can work on those colors a little later. Gives us a good start. Now, we don't want to spend too much time in any one place. Here it gets a little fussy. So, let's work on some of the trees. Again, we'll do some paints gray, lizard and crimson. Let's put some darks in here. And yeah, maybe some burnt umber. Yeah, it's kind of colorless. Let's put some reds in there. Mix that with some reds. I'll get some interesting color in there. Again, working from oil, we kind of want to go from the dark, darkest color, if we can, to the lightest color. So we'll put some lights over the top of this, these darks here. Okay, yeah, let's just take a little bit of blending here and there. Not too much. Okay. Now, let's just... Start looking at where we want these trees. And we'll make maybe an idea of where we want to start. Maybe I want to start out with a foreground fence post. And maybe another one a little farther back in the distance. And yet another one back in here. And again, if we don't like where these are, we can change them just really quickly. Okay, let's add a little more, a little more darks in here. Again, this is a, kind of a just a dark purple violet color. It's a mixture of alizarin crimson, Payne's gray, and it's on a very coarse brush. Now we're going to take a it's called a rigger. It's uh, just a really long, narrow brush. We can get them at any Hobby Lobby, uh, Michael's, any art store will have them. Now we want this to be thinned down with some thinner, but yet we don't want any white in it. We want it fairly dark, but the thinner will make it come off the brush fairly easily and let's see where do we want this detail is not what we're trying to achieve here it's simplicity and speed okay now we'll just take a little bit of Really, the bristly brush again, and we'll just just a tap or two. There we go. Now back to the rigger. This time, we're gonna put some white in here. Now we can start to see the violet violet color. We'll twist the brush just a little bit. There we go. We've kind of already scratched a kind of a trail in the paint, so we don't have to be quite as careful. Now again, let's take take some dark color. Again, a lot of this violet color. Let's put some just a touch.
Okay, now I'm going to put kind of a maybe a light green color mixture of colors here. Just a touch. A little tiny bit of red. Back into the dark. Paints gray, lizard curtains in. Alrighty then. We'll get a small brush and touch up that barn a little bit. Back into the dark. Put some shadow underneath the eaves. And maybe we're going to put a little bit of, uh, I like the idea of some rocks over here large rocks so we'll maybe take a little bit of the paint off from here take kind of a flat brush and what color rock do we want and just kind of blur them in at the bottom maybe a little more color and now some shadow with some darks. Put a little shadow here. Another one here. And we'll put some grass just kind of down around the bottom. And maybe a little tree. All right there. And let's call it a greeting card. There we are. We'll, uh, again, let's just take this off. So you can see the border on it. I'll sign it tomorrow when it dries. And I'll put the embossing stamp on it right here. A nice little card. Nice gift. Good practice. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.